Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Thank you for being with me. Today I am going to put up one of basically two prophecies that have to deal with Kamala Harris and how this woman is integrated into the system that I have been speaking of for many years here. The beast system, the Lord has revealed since years back that America will be the seat of the beast. And you can read more about that in Daniel chapter seven and also in Revelation chapter 17, where if you study those chapters, you can actually see the emergence of a carefully structured society that is part of a one world governmental structure, a, a global governing structure that for better or worse, and mostly for worse, is not going to look anything like the government structures that we are used to. <clears throat> Some countries, uh, when that system comes to them, they may be more, much more familiar with that type of governance because it is a very centralized form of government. It is a form of government in which the government does not dispense power um, and autonomy to independent counties and states, everything will be managed from a core. And that core is the seat of the beast. So um, democratic countries that are used to involving the people in procedures like voting, involving the people in procedures like memorandums, involving the people in procedures like um, surveys and things like that to keep a pulse on the population and to keep them integrated into the whole they're not used to that kind of thing. And America is not only not used to that kind of thing, she is extremely vocal. She is extremely opposed to that kind of thing. America has um, very particular laws that protect personal freedoms here. And um, the reason that the Lord has brought forth this prophecy, which I just put up maybe even two hours ago, the reason that the Lord has brought forward this prophecy for today is because the United States of America needs to understand that being under judgment from God carries some very particular things. So it carries the loss of privileges. It carries the loss of um, protection. Excuse me, please. Wow. It carries the loss of position. It carries the loss of influence. And this is why when I'm bringing forward these prophecies, I'm always very clear because it seems we have a coalition of people, not only in America, but around the world, who seem convinced that because they don't have the stamina to continue on with life, they don't have the stamina, nor do they have the wherewithal to build up the fire of their faith, to obey the words of Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, where the fruit of the Spirit is listed. We always talk about the love and the joy and the peace part but it's very hard now to hear sermons and teaching on building up the fruit of endurance, building up, cultivating, and learning how to submit to patience, building up and learning how to benefit from self-control. Here in America, we are watching the distressing rise of singular madness. They're going to keep calling it mental health issues as people chop up other people and put them in the freezer just so other nations can know what's going on here. They're going to keep calling it mental health issues when um, people are serial killers, when people are mass murdering children and then killing themselves. And uh, the police are left staring at maybe eight to 10 bodies with no explanations, taking families hostage, taking them somewhere and shooting them. These crimes, they keep being called senseless in the news, but to those who are spiritual, spiritual people, studying people, listening people, people who are staying linked to the Lord, people who are praying, people who are receiving information and guidance from the Heavenly Father, we know that we have entered into an accelerated time of spiritual madness. And so America will not be spared. She's going to lose her position. She's going to lose her influence. She's going to lose her power. And so this group that is many millions strong in this country who truly believe that because they are fainting wallflowers, that God owes them some kind of speedy Gonzalez end ending. He's just going to roll up everything and give them like a two week 
nuclear war and a five minute this, and then suddenly rapture time. I really can't minister to those people anymore. To do that would be disingenuous and extremely unfair to the other people who soberly read the word of God. There's so many mature Christians out there who have been reading the word of God before I knew my ABCs. They know how this thing goes and they know that it is a marathon and not a sprint. And so if you're fainting and you don't stop by Jesus's well, you don't stop by his gas station to fill your tank, it's going to be a very trying time for you because God says that America will be crumbling like a cliff face that is going to be eaten away by the water until her final collapse. And so the prophecy from the master's voice today, October the 8th, is called Kamala Harris and the Beast. And it will be looking at how this woman, again, is part of the ushering in of the end times beast system. So God has been talking about this woman a lot. God has been talking about Barack Obama a lot. God has been talking about Donald Trump a lot. And it's not because God is interested in the political machinations of America. He's truly not. God is kingdom minded above all things. And since America is a kingdom that has already been written in the books as something that will be completely wiped away. I know many people, they're asking, when you, when you say completely, do you mean part way? I keep saying this country, the punishment upon the land mass is that it shall be removed from the sight of God. Since this is a continent and it can't vaporize into the sky, there's only one more place for this place to go, and that is under the sea. If you have heard of the city called Atlantis, that is America's ending. You may like it, you may not like it, you may dispute it, you may do all the things you want to do. But since I am finishing, all I have to say is, as Atlantis went under the sea, America is going to follow. Kamala Harris and the Beast, October the 8th, 2022. And as I started to write this prophecy, I was halfway through transcribing it from notes and the Lord said, Kamala Harris is going to delete everything America looks like and replace it with a new thing. So I'm halfway through, like an hour and a half through, and then he says that, and that is what the banner is for today. So when God keeps bringing a thing and bringing a thing, Donald Trump, Obama, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, Donald Trump is not because he's interested in how America cares about her political people. He's stressing a point. He's saying this is pending and important information, so you should pay attention it's kind of a verily, verily, I say unto you thing. And when this stuff is pressing upon my spirit every day, a new prophecy, I will not, pro I will not publish every single thing that he says. It just means that a point is being driven home. And there's another prophecy with many small snippets of things that he said. So I will link that in the description and then I don't have to make a video for it. Kamala Harris came up a lot in 2020, towards the end of the year, I dreamt of this woman saying that she's the president of the United States. And I was thinking, lady, you're not a president. You're not on the ticket. Nobody's paying attention to you. You're stapled to Joe Biden. So what do you mean? And when I woke up, the Lord would say things like, this is Kamala's election. When Biden enters that White House, he's taking two people with him, Kamala Harris and Barack Obama. And now three years have passed and God has widened the scope and reveal the things he was talking about. And so here's the dream. I dreamt that Kamala Harris was making a speech on TV. It was a very important speech. The nation had been already told that this big speech was coming up. And so it's a nationwide address and it was being simulcast, simulcast all over the world. So other nations was paying attention. However, here's the strange thing. This woman was not speaking English. She was speaking a language that came upon my heart as Tamil. Now in the dream, I didn't know what Tamil is, but it was very clear to me that she was speaking Tamil. The whole speech was in Tamil, not English. And the first question upon my heart observing her in the dream is, why are you talking to us in a language that we don't understand? Why are you addressing us in something that we don't speak at all? What is this Tamil? And since it's not the majority language of America or the majority language of most of the other nations, why is such an important speech being broadcast in Tamil. But I was hearing the speech in English, and even though she was saying many things, here is the part that I remember. Kamala Harris said this, 
Why have you followed and emulated the United States? Why have you followed and copied America in your ways? America is under judgment. America is about to be judged. All who are like her in her ways, her sins, her evil, you will be judged along with her. To the very extent that you have copied her, God will judge you. If you have any laws like America, unjust laws, immoral laws, unrighteous laws, God will punish you the same way he punishes America. To the extent that you copied her, if you have tolerance for sin and other forms of immorality in your society or in your legal system especially, you will be judged by God. I am Kamala Harris. I am the U.S. president. I am telling you the facts of the matter. This nation is under judgment. And to the extent any nation has accepted her evil and copied her actions, they will be judged also. So if I remember nothing else, that's what I remember. A speech in a foreign language. And saying that America is judged and that anybody who copies America will be judged by God. And she was speaking as much to America to tell us that we are under God's judgment as much as she was addressing foreign nations. So foreign nations, you have homosexuality on the books. You are calling it um, not a sin. It's a, it's a preference now. It's decriminalized. South Africa, looking at you and other nations in the EU. It's not a sin. You have marriage, same-sex marriage on the books. In some cases, it's full marriage. In other cases, it's civil union. Um, some countries, you are breaking down long-standing taboo about men being transgender. You now have men in dresses, Nigeria, looking squarely at you. Men who are becoming social media booming stars, likes, clicks, followers. You were not raised this way, but now you have started following men in drag, popularizing them, praising them, whoever this Bob Risky is. You think that God will applaud you? This woman who serves Satan in the dream was saying that this nation that I am sitting in, the United States of America, is already rejected by God. It is a nation that is going to reap the full whirlwind of Revelation 18, and in Revelation 18, it says all the merchants that traded with Babylon and all the kings of the earth stood afar off and they wailed, watching as her judgments came upon her in one hour. Well, God is letting everyone know that in as much as you put abortion on the books, African countries and South American countries that have allowed these U.S. and other foreign NGOs to come in and start advocating for abortion in your nations. You copied those laws. You have started to relax your legal protocols and call abortion health care. You have started to allow many pride parades in many territories of the earth. You will be judged to the full extent of America's sin that you have accepted, that you have opened the gates, that you have received. And so this is what this servant of the beast was saying in her strange language, but God translated it for me in English. The dream changed and I saw this woman was writing on top of the U.S. Constitution. And may the citizens of this nation please listen, because this part, you are going to hate it. This part, you are going to see it, even if you hate it. I saw her sitting at that same desk that I've seen Joe Biden sit at, that same desk that President Donald Trump sat at. It's some desk that they sit at on the first day, and they bring them a lot of new laws, and they bring in them a lot of um, bills that have been voted on and everything, and it just needs now the executive signature to pass. And those two presidents have sat there, you know, they'll sign, and then they'll give the pen to somebody as, you know, um, keepsake, and then they'll get a new pen and they'll keep signing. Well, nobody was bringing Kamala Harris any documents to sign. She had the Constitution of the United States. It wasn't in any kind of climate-controlled box. 
It wasn't surrounded by sheet glass. It wasn't preserved or protected in any way. She had the raw document in front of, a, in front of her and she was making corrections and changes. And in some cases, she was completely getting rid of certain provisions. And I saw cabinet members and I saw cabinet ministers, I saw official staff surrounding her exactly the way they've surrounded other male presidents in the past. And these people all saw what this woman was doing, that she was desecrating the U.S. Constitution. She was making solo executive changes directly on the document, and not a single person said a word. I saw that some of the older men, men who have been in government for so long that their hair has turned gray, they were stunned looking at what this woman were doing. Their eyes were so big that it was almost comical, like watching how the cartoons are surprised, like doing. Their eyebrows were raising up to the top of their head, and yet everybody was mute. All mouths were shut. And she didn't even see their reaction. She didn't even look up. She was busy doing what she was doing, editing the constitution, making corrections and alterations. And in some cases, she scratched out stuff very vigor vigorously with a big black pen. I've spoken about this black pen. You can find out more about it in one of the old prophecies about this woman that is called a broken rule of law where I saw her with a thick black felt marker and she was scribbling and making alterations and Xing out whole passages of the constitution. I spoke in a, re in a recent video that is called Brace for Impact, Brace for Impact, that I saw Kamala Harris holding a black marker like a wand. Now, from where I'm sitting, we write from left to right like this. Well, she was waving the the marker from right to left as if writing backward. And as she was doing this on the constitution, the words, the letters were flying off the thing. It was like she was unwriting it with her marker. What is coming to my heart to tell you right now is that you should remember the part of the book of Daniel where it says that the coming fierce king, the king of fierce features, the son of perdition, one of the things he will do is he will think to, cha to change the times and laws. America, you're in that season and you don't even recognize it. You've got laws that don't protect children. The children are becoming the new hot performers at the drag shows. You've got laws that say that even if he's six foot eight, if he feels like a woman, then he is. He can identify as anything he wants, use the opposite gender bathroom, scare and endanger women, strip off, put a swimsuit on, jump into the pool, smash all the records, win all the awards, and it's okay. There was some state where I think it's hockey, and the girl said that they were not comfortable because they had one trans male. The school responded by banning all the females from the female locker room so that the man in a bra could stay in the locker room and be comfortable. Think to change the times and laws simply means to reverse all that is normally known in statehood and put stuff in there that we've never ever seen before in the history of nations. And so here is the amendment that this lady crossed out. She crossed it out completely. I, I mean, she scratched it out. She blotted it out until it was just a black scratched area. Amendment two is what it kept being call in, called in this dream. Amendment two. Now I know it's the second amendment, but it was referred to as amendment two. And here's one of the announcements that was being played all the time in that time when this second amendment will be gotten away with. It will be removed completely. It will not be there. Please hear me. I'm not speaking of something that will happen today or next week. That's what prophecy is. It is speaking forth the times to come as revealed by the spirit of the Lord. Here is the one of the announcements that was playing on that future AI, that future AI voice. Amendment 2 is hereby revoked by United States federal laws and ordinances. 
Amendment 2 shall henceforth and from this moment no longer apply in any of the United States territories and states here party to the U.S. Constitution. Amendment 2 is now outlawed. It is now illegal to possess any items previously guaranteed, protected, or referred to in U.S. Constitution Amendment 2. Now, please excuse the noise. Now, these kinds of announcements will be very common in that, in the way the beast system will be done. It will be very, very common. We will be hearing a lot of information given publicly on a loop through um, multimedia, through screens, through audio advertising. Just the way they announce that the train is coming or that a, a plane is landing at Terminal 2, Terminal 5. It will be like that. We will be listening to a lot of programming announcements and changes through this speaking AI. And the point of that, I, I have videos that explain very excellently what the point of the AI is, so I won't go into that. Um, the point of this AI is basically to wear down your inner muscle. It is to wear down your ability to think properly and to say no, because as long as constant announcements are being made, whether you consciously feel, I don't believe this, I don't agree with it, your subconscious its job is just to record sound. So it simply records everything that you say. And then when you fall asleep or when you go into times of repose and rest, you are at the mercy of your subconscious because it plays for you in your sleeping vulnerable state, everything that you have heard. So your conscious mind can say no, but the way that people are worn down is because if you constantly expose them to a playing loop, in their conscious waking state, they begin to do this. Well, it's not so bad. Well, at least they're not taking this and that away from us. And that is how you get people to cross the party line and do things like take the harm versus harm. You simply announce it to them, announce it to them, announce it to them, because these people that do these things understand the human psyche very well, sometimes even better than the humans themselves. And so, um, the second amendment to those who are foreign and don't understand, it's a simple sentence that protects America by giving her the right to form militias. In case the government goes rogue, the second amendment says that people can rise up and get rid of that rogue government. They have the right to bear arms. They have the right to protect their property from unlawful search and seizure, from bear attacks, human attacks, thieves coming on the property, a corrupt government that tries to do overreach, and everything else under the sun. It's one sentence that says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But in that future that I am speaking to now, the one that we already set our feet on an unmovable path since 2020, Amendment 2 is not going to be a part of U.S. life. They're going to revise it. They're going to re-revise it. They're going to revise it some more. They're going to amend it further. They might take out one word in one year and then two more words in the second year. They're going to erode that simple sentence piece by piece. They're going to make new laws on top of it that make certain parts of the second amendment inoperable or useless, prohibiting this part of it or that part of it until one day the amendment will be functionally useless. And then they will take it away altogether. Amendment two will become a crime for which if you are caught breaking it, meaning that if you are part of any militia and you're caught, if you are part bearing any arms or you're caught, you can lose your life under the new treason laws that are coming to America. And God was telling me, this part was when I woke up, God was telling me that the laws for treason in this country are going to be amended and stretched so far that they will cover a large body of crimes. I've been saying that they will tell you that your eyebrows, your eyebrows are too full and that you are breaching the hair law. And then they just jail you for an unimaginable amount of time. They will create new criminal subsets that have never existed before. It will be a micromanaging society. And in order to exist in that society, a lot of people are going to turn snitch. 
So if we're seeing that corporations are now amending terms of service and they're giving themselves so much extra power, like what PayPal has recently done, then don't be deceived that this government that also operates exactly like a corporate entity cannot do the same. They can and they will do the same because I've seen many times, and even in this dream, I saw that America became a land known for an endless number of crimes against this state. They will start to talk about America in that time as if she's a real person. The state will be spoken about as if she's a woman that has feelings that can be hurt, as if she's a woman or a small child that can be endangered. Instead of being an intangible entity made, us of, uh, made up of us, the human beings, we are the ones who can be hurt by wrong laws. We are the ones who can be endangered by wrong laws. But America will be spoken about as if she is the victim of her own people and crimes please listen, of things that you have only read in books, I have only read in books, they will be real crimes. Crimes of thought will exist. I've said this before because I've seen it. And here's an example. If you buy a book by an author who is known to have strong views about things like civil rights and freedom, personal liberty, the right to congregate, the right of free speech, if you, if you buy any book or found in possession of any book by a writer who says things like this, the rights of the people is draped in the flag of freedom and soaked in the blood of her warriors. If you get a book that has sentences like that in it, you will be accused of incitement if you speak of what you read in that book to other people, and you will be accused of sedition if you are caught in possession or ownership of that book. So if you share what you read in that book to anyone else, and that person agrees with you, and then repeats what you told them to a third person, and the third person happens to be a snitch or someone of loose lips who goes and repeats it to a fourth person who's a snitch, or maybe the third person and the second person are heard speaking that the first person has that book, even if they agree, if any of you are caught along the chain, you will be in trouble. If anyone along the chain of conversation reports you, you will be accused of having thoughts and intents that are anti-statist and dangerous, and you can be punished severely or even killed for that. Incarceration will actually be one of the milder punishments in those days. More and more as the beast system establishes herself, death will be the deterrent that they used. And in an upcoming prophecy, I will speak about how I saw that in those days, people were taken away and we never heard of them again. And yet their status in society was never updated to. This person has died. We were simply told that this person was in indefinite detention. And even if 25 years or five years passed and we never saw that person again, it was never said with closure, this person was put to death for this. We simply never saw them again and they were said to be on indefinite detention. So the Lord says that the beast system is a draconian world of authoritarian measures. Simplified, all those words mean that America who constantly calls other countries regimes will become the greatest regime ever seen worse than Russia, worse than China, worse than anybody who currently exists. No conversation will be tolerated. You will not be given any leave to a lawyer, a state of appeal. They're going to break down and remove all that stuff and replace it with a very highly monitored and well-organized state project. God says it will be a government-run project that focuses on centralized power. That's right. All this thing of the states can make their laws and the individual counties and mayors and governors, all that stuff is going to go away. Even U.S. territories. I'm speaking to Trinidad, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Haiti, everybody who is connected to this country and under her current control, God says that there will be uniform laws, the same laws, the same rules throughout all U.S. territories. States will not be making 
any laws. And additionally, when I was writing this prophecy, the Lord said to tell Puerto Rico and Mexico that you are going to face many troubles because of this, your neighbor, America. Appointed officials that have very far reaching powers, almost unlimited powers. These people can just make decisions on a dime without having to check the ones at the very top. They will be sent on a regular basis to visit every area of the nation. Their job will be to oversee all the projects that are being undertaken to build up the new world order, all the changes that are unique to setting up and rolling out this beast government. America does not currently practice centralized power. She has a federal system, but there's tons of autonomy. Omaha doesn't have to do anything that New York is doing. Florida doesn't have to do a single thing that another state is doing, but states will lose their freedom to make individual laws. So one thing that was coming, the Lord was putting this on my heart, that all this celebration of row, row, row your boat, this thing is a farce. This thing is your farce. And I might as well say, I've been seeing babies in the early morning being killed by what is called a stamp. Um, people who make shoes, they know what a stamp is. A stamp is some kind of metal machine that has a section that is an automated arm. So it's like a rod. And I think when you're making the shoes and you want to really get the heel to stick to the rest of the shoe, you, here's the thing, you put the shoe on it and then the stamp comes down like this and hits the shoe a couple of times, very hard to get it to stay glued to the rest of the shoe. I have been seeing conveyor belts with little children alive on the belt coming down. And when it gets to that stamp, the thing hits them right in this area where the rib cage is. And that is the end of the children. It comes out bleeding. And then this body continues down the conveyor belt and falls off out of sight. So I can't even see where the bodies are going. But I have covered in many other prophecies where those bodies go. They go for food. They go for enterprise at it as, as commercial, commercial stuff that can be sold. So I've been seeing the end of children in this country. And the Lord just says that if you think these false and fake overtures that the government makes towards the citizens of this nation, if you think that you can count those things as real victories, that Roe is overturned, then you're very deceived because nobody's stopping abortion pills from coming to the house. And in fact, they are streamlining the killing of these children, making it ever more efficient. And all that happened a few months ago was a farce. I have seen the killing of children. I have seen the putting of children into that thing where you put meat into it, then you put it on and ground beef comes out the other end. In my mind, the word that comes to me is gristle mill, gristle mill. God says that America is a gristle mill for the born and the unborn, a relentless machine that chews up life and spits it out the other end with no shame and no repentance. And so, centralized power. There will be a central state that has all the power and all the states will make the same laws. No more individualism, no more we're against this and we're hanging on to our guns and abortion is outlawed. One law to bind them all. That is how it will be. And God said there will even be a schedule of duties. This is something that will be published where every state, every state is supposed to check up with that schedule or duty of duties, like a register, every state, it is the responsibility of every state to check up with that schedule to make sure that they're up to date on everything the schedule says that they should have. So if they say um, that there is too much carbon emissions and anyone who goes over a certain number, their heat should be turned off and everybody else does it and then Hawaii forgets and then they find out that certain people who are above their carbon emissions still have heat, when the overseer, the North Korean style prefect comes to check up in that area and finds that, uh, why, why is your heat usage high? And then they narrow it down to region and they narrow it down to house. Then Hawaii, Hawaii will face severe fines 
penalties and taxes. This is a system of severe fines, penalties, and taxes for individuals and for states. So um, the states will be required to send money to the central government as fees, fees. So even if you're not being fined for breaking any of the central schedule of duties, states are going to be sending money to the central government. They're going to be sending special taxes to the central government, exactly like in the old days where there were the rich people and then the poor people called the serfs working on what is known as a fiefdom. These were fiefs, they were working on the land and then they would have to give a portion to the rich person as their tax. Well, it was feeling in my soul exactly like that medieval system and I was stunned that God is telling me about something that is hundreds and hundreds of years outdated and yet coming back to us. And um, God says that Kamala Harris will be the face of these changes. So when you see that face coming in and all the feminists are breaking open the champagne, and he said this as far back as November, 2020, that when you see this woman, know that you are stepping into the era of the beast. She is actually the handmaid of the NW final letter, but she's not the beast himself. The beast has been clearly laid out as a system and a man. And you can find out more right in the scripture by reading Revelation 13 and Daniel chapter seven, verses seven to 28. The beast is a kingdom. And this kingdom cannot be resisted by people who are stressed out, frustrated, crying, or saying that the videos on this channel are a lie. Personal responses change nothing because these things are end times prophecy. The Bible clearly says that this kingdom will rise. The Bible clearly says that he will trample the residue with his feet. The Bible clearly says that he will be given power over the holy people to defeat them until the time that the ancient of days arises and judges in favor of his people. These things were written before YouTube were invented. So imagine having outbursts and thinking that they will take away eternal ancient words that must come to pass before ever we see our Lord's face. The beast kingdom has a throne. It has a seat of power. And Revelation 17 de describes very clearly that the seat of that power is Mystery Babylon. Just a moment, please. Mystery Babylon is called, among her many names, the city by the sea. And the scripture in Revelation 17 explains that that sea actually refers to multiples of mixed peoples, nations, tribes, and tongues. Mystery Babylon is the one who has the spirit of a harlot prostitute spirit, a great city that is said in Revelation 17 to rule over all the kings of the earth. And so I will link the text of this prophecy below so that you can read it. I highly recommend reading it so that you can find out about the horn that was waging war against the holy people and defeating them. That horn is already here in the United States and is just waiting for the time when he will come forth. We thank the Lord for his word. I certainly do thank him. I certainly thank him for the honor of privilege of trusting me with these things. These are end times things, important things, and they are just not given carelessly by the Lord. So I really thank him for trusting me with them. This is Celestial with the master's voice. God bless you. And until I see you again, goodbye.